G'day world and welcome back to Stuff We Do, where we do all the knife stuff you love. Knife reviews, knife tests, knife modifications and outdoor stuff with knives. Today we are talking Bultong knives. Okay, when I just started this channel I had a lot of videos on about Bultong and I had a lot of Bultong knives on there already. But because all my things are all over, uh, just give me a second. Okay, um, a knife. Okay, if you want to cut Bultong you can use a knife okay this is my call knife i don't know how sharp it is at this stage but it should still do the job okay now first thing um you store your bolton in a brown paper bag so that the fat can go out and it can dry without starting to mold now this is bolton okay um can you see that delicious okay um, if you buy the things overseas or wherever, sometimes what they do is they cut it beforehand. Um, like I had half of this, uh, what do you call it, sliced by the butcher. Um, ate most of it. But anyway, but it gets drier and drier and drier over time. So if you don't make it or if you don't have places that make it where you live, you will most likely get these nasty hard little pieces of bacon. Ach, bacon, bold up. Okay. Um, Okay, so what you would do, okay, look at me, I'm taking this part at the back, which doesn't have the good fat on it, because that I will be eating, the dry parts will be fed to my wife and kids. Now, anyway, so you can take a knife and just, okay, this is not too sharp anymore, but anyway, and then cut it into little pieces, and that is fine, but that's not, I'll show you now the, the way to really do it. Okay, then, if you are old, you will have one of these. Okay, little feet, and it's like, let me just see if I can move this thing up so you can actually see what I'm doing over here. Okay, it looks like this. It's a thing that you use to chop your bacon or to cut it. This is like a, a blade that you would get inside of a, what do you call that thing, a planer. It's got the edge on one side, a place where you put your bolt on. Okay, let me just quickly demonstrate. Anyway, can you see that? Yes, you can kind of see that. Sorry, I have my phone rigged very stupidly. Anyway, so you put your bolt in there and then you chop it like that, which is nice if you want fat little bits and it's relatively safe. Don't put your fingers under there. Anyway, so it will chop it up into pieces like that. Okay, now let's go look at bolt knives now to really cut bolt Okay, I hope you can hear me. Um, we have a guy on the roof cleaning gutters, so my dogs want to eat him. Um, anyway, where were we? Okay, so I made a lot of videos about um, Boltong knives, and I was looking for them, but I couldn't find all of them, because, yeah, we will make a video of me sorting all of my knives, and packing them, and storage containers, and all of those things. Um, but that's going to be in a different video. Okay, Boltong knives. Sorry for the rocky start, I'm back. Um, now the guys leave blowing in front of the house, which is better. Okay, Bultong knives. Um, let's first look at a few more traditional Bultong knives. For example, this is the Okapi Bultong Butcher. Now this one has been modified by Eki's Knives. I've done videos on this and I have shown you several Bultong knives before. Just Google Bultong knives and you'll most likely see a few of my videos. Okay, but this thing is quite awesome. Now, what makes a good Boltong knife? A Boltong knife needs to have, well, it doesn't need to, but if it doesn't have a big sharpening choil, it's easier to cut into the meat because remember, you're going to do it in reverse. So you're going to cut this way or this way. Okay, uh, yeah, this way. Um, but you're going to cut towards yourself. Okay, um, but if there's a big sharpening groove, it might get caught in there. Okay, not the biggest problem, you can just choke up past that, but yeah. Okay, then also, straight blades normally work a bit better, and it needs to feel comfortable in this position, because this is how you're going to cut it. Unless you, um, I think I, yeah, that video should have played already, I think, of me cutting, bolting on a board. Okay, just use a sharper knife than I did. I've been using my call knife for pretty much everything, and it's not the sharpest anymore. Anyway, um, so... While you are sitting, watching the rugby, next to a fire, enjoying a beer, there's nothing better than it sitting there and carving your own boltong. Okay, boltong 
um, is meat that was left in a brine, preferably overnight. Um, then you spice it and you hang it up to dry. Okay, until it is uh, windruig, wind dried. Okay, then you can start eating it pretty much. Okay, um, some people like their bultong uh, very wet still, so it's still wet. Um, it's fantastic that way, but it means you can't store it for a long time. If you want to take it on a, I don't know, six month safari on horseback, then make sure it's completely dry before you start. Yeah, then it won't go off or spoil. Okay, now I like mine anyway, as long as there's a huge amount of fat on it. Okay, um, so yes, I like bultong with fat. It's good for the joints. It oils my joints. That's why I'm so bendy. Yeah, okay. Okay, anyway, so here's the classic Bultong Butcher by Ukapi. Then, um, the rest of you might know this as a Swiss Army knife as a pruner. Okay, we call this a Bultong knife. Okay, so here in South Africa, this thing works perfectly for a Bultong knife. I did a video on this one uh, long ago. There we can see it. Tom van... What's that? Fallen Wiffen? Yeah, I think so. Okay, anyway, so this was an old rugby player. Um, yeah, I did a whole video if you want to see that. Anyway, now these things work perfect. They have long handles, short blades. Can you see the handle to blade ratio? But they work perfectly as bultong knives. Okay, so we use these things as bultong knives over here. And then this thing I did a video on a little while back. It's a bultong and beer knife because you can open beer with one side and you can... Eat your bolt on this side. Okay, so it's also a little sheep's foot blade. Um, now, let me quickly show you this one. I picked this one up last year at the Brooklyn Knife Show. This is by... What's that? Chris de Beer. Okay, so it's a Chris de Beer custom knife. Um, I have this whole certificate and everything. Did you see that wonderful off-stop? Okay, so anyway, and it's got a little opening there. Yes, that's crisp, ne? Okay, anyway, so this thing. The handle is made to fit in your hand like this, and then you cut your bolt on with it. Slight hollow grind, beautiful. Check his nice little logo over there. Crisp the beer. And this is what I need to show you. Where's it going to break? Where's it going to break? Pow, there. Isn't that fantastic? Can you see that? The transition is magic. Hook. Yes, you didn't even see where that was going to break. Okay, but yeah, custom knives tend to have better fit than normal knives. Anyway, um, then this thing I showed you a while back. Actually, I showed you the sheath and the making. No, not the making of the sheath, but the sheath I had made for it. This is my little Jordan custom. Uh, there we can see Johan Jordan, um, also a South African knife maker. And this little thing... I think was intended for a self-defense knife for his wife. This is the Goblin. Um, you can go check out Johan on Instagram. And I think you can also go check out Chris the Beer on Instagram. Anyway, if you watch these videos, there will be links to them. Okay. Um, but this little one turned out to be quite a fantastic little bulldog knife. So it got a different use as intended. Okay. But I love this little thing. Okay. So there's that out of the way. Okay, so now, we're done with the more traditional bultong knives. Now, let's look at knives that we in South Africa normally use as bultong knives. Things like hawk bulls. This is a rough ride hawk bull. This is my classic carbon one. Okay, um, and they work wonderful for bultong because the hawk bull catches the meat and it takes it to where it's supposed to be. See again? No big sharpening choil, so nothing will stick there. So hawk bulls work fantastic for bultong knives. Our grandfathers used to have normal pocket knives, slip joints, not even lockbacks necessarily. And these things work for bultong knives when bultong was invented. So there's nothing wrong with a slip joint. My dogs can see the guy in front of the house again. Oh no, wait, there's a car. Give me a second. I'm back again. Sorry. This has been the most disruptions I've had in a video since I don't know when. My wife ordered things from the shop and the delivery guy just pitched up now. Okay, 
we were talking about knives that can be used for any knife can be used for a bulldog knife but like i said straight edge nice hollow grind i quite love this fracture i actually got this one from uh, gary the last ranger and he did this fading die job on it um but this thing is a super little slip joint okay so that will also work nicely now knives i have found that work fantastic as built on knives or things like this this little thing uh now i cannot remember its name swinky the outdoor edge swinky straight blade sheep's foot worn cliff sheep's foot worn cliff sheep's foot um wonderful wonderful little knife a little friction folder and it works fantastic for bulldog this thing i love this knife okay the kershaw poly um good knife solid knife nothing wrong with it i like this thing um it's like a very easy slip joint um it doesn't have super pull but it's not mushy it's good i like this thing in everything okay and if you choke up on this thing you're far beyond the sharpening choil and it works beautifully for a bulldog knife also this one if you're into button locks like i am now well yeah i like them then how many more i will get but unless there's something super about the next one i think i found my favorite button lock i'll show you now anyway this thing works fantastic for a bulldog knife because the swayback design actually lends itself to holding it in this grip so this one works fantastic and it's a nice thin little blade beautiful okay then of course i love penguins penguins are fantastic and they work well for everything okay now we do not just need to use straight edged blades for bulldog knives i have used this one for a bulldog knife on many occasions and it's always worked well Okay, it's not as slicey as most, but depending on what bolt on you are cutting, this thing will also work. So you can use your normal EDC knife for a bolt on knife, no problem. This one works exceptionally well for bolt on. So hey, if you're into spider coats, better too works for a bolt on knife. Okay, now today I want to try two things. I want to see how well this works for a bolt on knife because. That is one of the big things that I like doing on Saturdays is eating boltong, sometimes watching rugby if there's something on, and then or just sitting next to the fire eating boltong and drinking beer is fantastic. But you have to carve it, okay? And you only give the bad parts to the kids and the wife or the parts with less fat. And yeah, anyway, so we'll see if that one works. And then this one, I haven't tried this yet, but this seems to be. A fantastic little knife for a bolt-on knife. I think the spy blade will be very good. Okay, so let's see. Let me just grab my piece of bolt-on. Oh, look at this. Delicious. Mmm, delicious. Okay. Let's see. Now, that's why I say you can't buy Biltong from, um, what do you call it, pre-packaged or already cut Biltong. It tends to dry out and it's quite horrible. Oops, that one I got too far. Okay. Now, what you do is you cut a few pieces like this before you cut it off. Then, when you cut it off, you bite one little piece at a time mm. delicious okay now well, while i'm chewing this one works very very well for a nice little bolting knife slicey thin awesome that's the cold steel excuse me mini trapper Oh, nice thin little pieces. You see why the wife and the kids only get the parts without the fat? Because the fat makes it awesome. Okay, so this one works very well also. And the nice thing about cutting boltong, especially fat boltong, is you're already coating your blades. Mmm. 
Okay, I think that's me for Boltong Knives and Boltong for today. I'll buy something later. I'll add it on. Okay. I started the fire. I opened the beer. And let me just see if I can swap hands. And I'm playing with this thing. If you can see, I oiled it again. Because it's starting to get some lock stick. I don't know why all of a sudden it would do that now. So I checked if there was not something, maybe play or whatever. But it's not that. So I think I just need to play with it more so the lock stick will go away. Now it's nothing too bad. You can always press it, but it makes a little bit of a click. So I'm going to play with this until my vors is done. Maybe I'll show you how to tie off vors or something. Okay, I wanted to twist this, but it's not really necessary. I'm just going to bright like that and then cut it into red size pieces. So let's get this farm style boerewors on the fire. Okay, so in here I have four small onions and two tomatoes. I'm quickly going to make a relish. Okay, so I just quickly clean these things over the dustbin. I'm just cutting them up like this. That's fine. Um, so yeah, I'm not doing anything super cool. Okay, and then tomatoes, I think I'm pretty much also just going to cut it like this and then cut them like that. Okay, so I'm pretty much just going to keep doing this until I have my relish. Now that I put it on the fire, I realized I didn't have any oil, so I just added a lot of margarine and that should work fine. We'll throw in the magic ingredients in a few seconds. Okay, and then I'm adding a lot of spare steakhouse seasoning. Perfect. Now let this do their thing until everything is done. Now you have to add something sweet. You can use yanni, honey, hey yanni, honey, or brown sugar, or actually anything you want. I do Coca Cola. And then, because a the buri relish must be sweet. And this works quite well for me. Okay, this stuff is done now. So I'm going to take this off. And my fire seems just about. No, it's still a bit hot, but um, I can move the cold around and throw on my balls so long. Okay, while we. Yeah, the birds are fighting me today. Okay, while we are getting ready to fry this balls. Um, and I'm telling you that um, there's still, but I tightened this thing so much it doesn't even want to fall freely anymore. Anyway, um, but there's still a bit of lock stick, but I can feel it's getting better. But I'll have to just ease on that screw a bit. Anyway, uh, the pivot. Um, we were talking about Boltong today. So let me just say, Boltong is fantastic because you can add it to pretty much anything. Uh, pop and boltong, boltong soup, boltong in pasta, boltong in salads, boltong in anything. Boltong is magical stuff. Um, actually, you can add boltong to anything. I'm pretty sure if you add boltong, who doesn't like a creme brulee with a few pieces of dried meat floating in there? Um, or maybe not that. But let's get brying. Okay, normally I roll vors into coils because it's easier to turn, but I'm going to leave it like that because one, two, three, four, it looks like four pretty much straight pieces like that. Um, next time I'll show you how to do the pinch and turn thing if you want to make sections or links, but um, I'm not going to do that today. Okay, first turn. The fire seems hot, but it's fine. Um, okay, I'm not going to... Well, maybe I'll show you a bit more. Okay, she's drinking or seeing something underwater. Thank you all for watching. And if you made it to the end, you are fantastic. Thumbs up and all of those good things. I will see you. I don't know when, but whenever I see you. Until then, stay safe, happy and have a good one. Goodbye.